Hey guys, the other back dupe here. Today we're going over making your own local group policy and how to import that. So first thing you're going to need is a Windows 10 VM. So to get that, just Windows 10 ISO. Go to this website right here, and then you just hit download tool now. It will give you a tool that is used to download the Windows 10 ISO. You need to be on Windows to do this. It has to be a license too, so you can't pirate it. So once you get here, it's just going to go through this. I'll fast forward once it's done. All right, so you're going to read this, hit accept, wait for this again. All right, so once we're here, we're going to hit create installation media, hit next, recommend it for this PC, or you can customize it to whatever you want. I think this is all you can actually go to, actually. You hit next, ISO file, and then you're going to download it, choose where you want to save it, and then uh, once you save it, you'll start downloading it. So I'm not going to download it since I already have it installed on my computer, but uh, I already have the ISO on my computer. So once you're done with this, um, you'll have the ISO for where you saved it. So the next thing you want to do is you're going to want to boot up VMware. Then you're going to hit create a new virtual machine. Choose the ISO file. Hit next. Name it. So LGPO testing. Um, the file, 60 gigs is fine, so just hit next, customize hardware, and then you just customize this to your liking, so I'm just going to make this uh, better for my computer myself, because I have 16 gigs of RAM. Power this virtual machine after its creation, hit finish, and then it's going to create the disk. Alright, so now it's done, it's going to be booting up the virtual machine, and then we will go through the Windows install installation process. I'm just going to download VMware tools just to make my life easier. There we go. And then just uh, boot normally. And now we're in uh, the Windows setup. So you're just going to hit next. Install now. So if you have a product key, you can use it. But since we're just using this for testing, I'm just going to click I don't have a product key. And then you're going to choose what version you want. You're going to want to use Pro. Hit Next. Hit Accept. Uh, read this and then hit Accept. And then uh, Custom Install. Select your disk. Hit Next. And then it's going to run through the Windows 10 setup. I'll fast forward through this as well. Alright, here we go. Um, you hit I finished installing now since we're done using the ISO. Um, it's, it's, gonna, it's not going to work, whatever. Uh, I'm just going to run through this. Alright, here we go. Um, so to install um, VMware tools on the host machine, you're just going to hit player up here. Uh, manage, install VMware tools. Here it is. Hit yes, and it will get VMware's, VMware tools going for you. Just run through this. Alright, so once this is done, um, you can restart the image. Alright, so now that we're here, you can uh, maximize this bad boy. Um, so, I can make my life easier, I'm going to get down on Google Chrome. Microsoft Security Compliance Manager 4.0. You're going to search that, and then you're going to download it. It's like 150 megabytes, so it's going to take a little bit, I'll fast forward. Alright, we're just going to run this bad boy. And it has to download a ton of dependencies, so this takes a little bit. Alright, now this is done. You hit close, and it closes out after the installer closes out after you do that, so you just have to run it again. And now it should actually start installing it. It minimizes it, and then it gives you this. 
Um, always check for SEM baseline updates. You can just leave that on, doesn't really matter. And you're just gonna let this install. There's a couple installers you have to go through. There you go. Alright, now that this is done, just hit finish. And it should boot right back up. Here it is, it's gonna import everything, so it takes a minute. Alright, so since some of these source packs, or some of these baselines are actually older than me, we probably should get some new ones. So you're just going to hit uh, download Microsoft baselines manually. Oops. Actually, you're going to go to over to file and check for updates. And then it shows you all the ones you need. And you're just going to hit download. Alright, now that we're here, you're just going to hit run. And it takes a second. And just keep on hitting run. This is all here. Uh, yep, so everything's here. You just get next, and it's gonna import it all. Now that this is done, you're just gonna hit import, and it will get all these things imported. And then you're just gonna hit finish, and now you have all the one. Now you have all the current ones here. So we're gonna select the one we're gonna use. So the one that. Um, Sarah Patriot usually uses is 1607 and then you're just going to choose which one you need so we're going to do uh, security and this is the one that like does most of the security on the computer and it's its name and right here are all the reg keys for that Microsoft sees as like for security and there's about, there's um, 763 of them. So one thing you'll learn about this program is that it is literal trash and it does not work that well. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna right click on this, or oh, my bad, you're going to hit duplicate and you're just gonna name it whatever you want. So 1607 Uber secure. And I'll create duplication up here for custom baselines. And it automatically uses um, the Microsoft recommended one. And you can just change it from here. So like for, oh, event logging. Well, I, I probably want to see if this is being logged or not. So you just do success and failure and it changes it. And, um, there's like local group policy in here. There's a ton of things like, oh, allow Cor or Cortana. Nah, I don't want Cortana, it's disabled. Or let apps access the email. Nah, I don't want that. So basically what you do is you just go through basically every single one of these reg keys and you determine if it's important or not. So what's nice about this is it gives like a little, here are the passwords. So it gives like a little like sp spiel on like what it does. So if you open it up, it shows you what it is, like, oh, it helps terminal services, saving passwords on the computer. Do not allow terminal passwords to be saved. You probably want that enabled. That's a security thing. Or always prompt password upon connection. Yeah, you probably want that too. It's just a lot of these random things that may or may not be scored that are important to change. You just wanna make sure you don't change or lock out the system too much because I've made ones where it accidentally logs out registry or seek command prompt or even Internet Explorer. So like here's a good one. Interactive login do not require control delete. One thing you'll realize about these is they sometimes they have double negatives. So to actually enable the settings, the setting, you actually have to um, disable it. Now this will require control alt delete every time you use it. Like I said, it's a little finicky and just kind of like freezes every time you use it. So if you enable a policy, users can log on without this key combination. So you want to disable it. If you disable this policy, users must press it before they log in. And here's some other ones like do not display user's last name. Like for example, you would want to enable that. 
or machine activity limit. 10 seconds or 10 minutes, 900 seconds, that's a good one. But like, it's just little things like this. You just have to go through the image and determine what is important for the security of the system and what is not. You don't have to change every single setting. I highly recommend you do not because some of them are just pre-configured and you don't need to do that. So now you are done. What you do is you hit export as GPL backup and you just drop it where you want to make your backup folder. Okay, new folder it is. And then here is your group policy. It shows everything you need to import it. So the next thing that next thing you're going to need is LGPO. LGPO. And you're gonna scroll down, download the latest version, and you are going to download LGPO.zip. Then you're gonna open it and you're going to drag the exe right here next thing is you're going to make a batch file that is not a file you are going to make a batch file make sure you have to turn on uh hidden files and folders and stuff and hide extension for known file types turn that off now you can right click this and then Name whatever you want. Dot that. Right click it. Edit. You're given this thing. So next, you're going to want to use lgpo.exe to import the local group policy. So for that, we're going to do at echo off cd percent swiggly line thingamajig which is right above the tag key, below the, right above the tab key and below the escape key. And then DP0. So the CDs, or this like makes the script use the current directory. Then we're also gonna rename this folder to LGPO. Then you're going to install it. So you're gonna do copy LGPO.exe to C, Windows, System32, then LGPO, or whoops, LGPO.exe, four slash G, LGPO, forward slash V, and then pause. Now this will import our LGPO we just made. So we're gonna run this as administrator and it's going to run through everything. Now if we open up group policy, window settings, security settings, and then security options, let's make this bigger, local policies, security options, you look through this and you'll see that it automatically did things like guest accounts disabled, administrator accounts disabled, and then if you look for control alt delete, it is disabled because we imported our LGPO and it did that automatically. So basically the LGPO is just a really nice thing that just basically lets you configure your own local group policy. And it's just very useful in real life and in Cyber Patriot. So thank you so much for watching and have a good day.